I have not made a pallet wood project in quite a long time, but I keep collecting pallets. So I have a bunch of it and it's kind of just stacking up and taking up room in my shop. So I'm finally going to do something about it. I am going to use some of it to build a globe in this video. And I think the biggest deterrent for me for not doing any pallet wood projects has just been knowing I'd have to mill up all the pallet wood. And I'm lazy, it's just a lot easier to grab something from the store that's already square and good to go. But I got a new planer, so I wanted to break it in, and this is a good project to do that. Also, you may remember I got a new planer just a few months ago from a company that sent me one for free, and they just asked me to do an honest review of their planer for them. And at the time, I gave them a good review, um, and I did mean it, I thought it was pretty good, but after using it for a while, I didn't like the way that the blades changed on it, and I had a hard time finding replacement blades for it. So um, I just wanted to give an update on that review, and hopefully I didn't steer anyone wrong with that. Um, but this new planer, I got a Bauer planer, and I like that one a lot better. Um, but yeah, once I got these all planed up, I glued them up into a large blank that I could use to make the base of the globe. Once the glue dried, the blank was not flat at all. Uh, all the wood is different widths and has jagged edges, so I can't just send it straight through my planer. So I hot glued the blank to a board that was flat, a piece of plywood, and then sent it through my planer to flatten the top. And the tape is just there to keep the hot glue from messing up my plywood. And once I had one side flat, I could reference that to mill up all the other sides of the blank. I'm going to cut a cove into this blank in just a minute here, but just so I don't have to cut such a deep cove, I'm going to remove the bulk of the material here at the table saw. And then I'm just going to hot glue together a jig to my miter saw to hold everything at the right angle and orientation that I want to as I make all my cuts into the blank. Also, I just want to give another warning. I do this a lot, but um, I like to cut coves on the miter saw. A lot of people don't like this, and you should not listen to me. I'm not an expert. Do what you think is safest. Um, but yeah, I cut the cove on the miter saw, and then I set my blade to 22 degrees so I can make an octagon out of this blank. And because I cut the cove on both sides, I can flip it after each cut and just make the next cut because it's a, it's a mirror image. So I don't have to waste any wood um, making these eight-sided pieces. This workpiece is pretty short, I don't really have much scrap to hold on to, so I glued on a sacrificial piece that can keep my hands away from the blades as I cut out these last few pieces. So now I'm just going to glue and pin all these pieces together to make my octagon, and I'm actually going to glue it up in halves, so that way I can glue it up in halves, sand the two halves flat, and then I should be able to glue those two halves together without any gaps. I didn't really draw anything up for this project. Um, I kind of just had an idea in my head and was figuring it out as I went along. Um, so after I glued up that octagon, I decided I didn't like it and decided to make it a circle instead. So I sanded off all the corners. The base is done, but I think it's going to look a bit weird if I just had the globe sitting directly on the base. I want to raise it up a bit, so I'm going to glue up a block that will raise up the globe, and I need to sand that to the right shape to fit onto the base.
And then I'm just going to CA glue this little piece to the base. And I'm not too worried about strength here just because I'm going to run a dowel through both pieces to better secure it later. I bought this uh, 3D printing pen a few months ago, and I haven't really used it much in any of my videos, but I thought it'd be cool to use it to make an inlay into the base. So I used my oscillating tool to uh, make a couple of cuts in the base, and then I'm going to fill those cuts with some transparent blue filament. My thought with using this filament was that it would kind of look like uh, blue epoxy, and it looks pretty rough right now, but once I sanded it all down, um, it looked pretty good. I like it. Next, I need to make an arc that can wrap around the globe and support it at both endpoints. And so to do that, I am going to do some kerf bending with wedges. Um, but before I do that, I need to mill up a piece to work with. And I have to cut this piece that I'm working with at 10 degrees because the base block that I made earlier that it's going to attach to is sanded at 10 degrees. So I want it to transition nicely from one piece to the next. So it's cut at 10 degrees. And then I'm going to use my miter saw to do all of the kerf bending. And I'm going to make a bunch of cuts almost all the way through the piece, about a 16th inch shy of all the way through, and spaced a half inch apart. And again, all the pieces I work with in this project are too short, so I have to glue on a sacrificial piece to keep my hand away from the saw. There's a little bit of math involved in trying to figure out what angle to cut all these wedges at to get the right arc that I'm looking for. And I don't really have much time to get into that in this video, um, but I have a video just dedicated to uh, kerf bending with wedges, and I'll put that up in the corner. Usually I would cut all the wedges flush, but for this project, I thought it would look cool if all the wedges were sticking out a bit. So I just let them be, and I even cut some bigger wedges for the two endpoints of the arc. Most of the parts of this globe are going to be attached using dowels, so I'm drilling a bunch of holes in this arc, and then I need to make the dowels, which also involves drilling a hole in a piece of scrap, and then I'm going to make some dowels on my bandsaw. This is my first time making dowels like this, and it turned out better than expected. Just needed to sand them down a bit, and they're good to go. And now for the main part, the globe. So I'm going to use some more pallet wood, and I'm first going to make sure I have a flat side that I can reference for the rest of these cuts. So I'm just going to run all these pieces through the table saw once so I have a good reference edge. And then I'm going to set my table saw to 5 degrees, and I'm going to cut all this pallet wood into a bunch of angled strips. And now I'm going to glue up all these strips into basically a half cylinder shape. So each of these strips is cut at 5 degrees um, on both sides. So it's basically 10 degrees. And I need to make a 180 degree turn. So 18 strips make this half cylinder.
The walls of this half cylinder are pretty thin, so if you push down on it at all, it flexes quite a bit. So I'm gonna hot glue it to a piece of plywood and then also hot glue a block onto the end just to make it more rigid so it can be more safely cut for the next steps. I set my miter saw to 5 degrees and now I'm going to slice up this half cylinder into a bunch of sections I'm going to use to make the globe. This process is pretty difficult for quite a few reasons. One being that because I'm taking such thin slices, I can't really cut all the way through or else it'll catch on the blade and get thrown against the wall. And then that piece is broken and I can't use it. And it's not really safe. So. I have to set my depth stop on the second cut and then finish the cut with a pull saw so that I don't ruin each of my pieces. And then the other problem with doing this is that I use pin nails to put together this half cylinder. Um, so that's not really a good idea when you're gonna have to cut into something for it to have nails in it. What I did do is I knew that was gonna be a problem so I marked out where I put all the nails. I put them all along a certain line that I have marked on the half cylinder. So I know where they are and I just have to cut around them as I'm going. Now with the half cylinder all diced up, uh, I need to glue these up into the actual globe. And each of these slices is cut at 5 degrees on either side. So 10 degrees and I need to make a full 360 degree globe. So I ended up gluing up 36 of these pieces, which was pretty tedious. And I did the same thing I kind of did with the base for the globe, is I glued it up into halves first, and then I sanded those halves and glued those together. And now here is when I ruined the whole project. So I glued on a template that I could follow to carve in all the uh, continents for the globe. And when I started carving into it, the uh, template started to flake off and pretty soon the whole thing fell off. And instead of gluing on a new template, I just thought, you know what? I have a pretty good understanding of what the globe looks like. Let me just freehand it. And I don't know what came over me. I don't know why I was so confident. I am horrible at geography. And you can really tell by looking at this globe. And I didn't use a very detailed bit. So it doesn't even resemble the continents. It just looks like a lumpy ball. So I had to just scrap this whole globe and remake it. So I remade the globe and I'm actually happy that that ended up happening because this new globe turned out a lot nicer the second time around and uh, this time when carving I was a lot more careful. I drew everything on first and then I carved it out with a much more detailed bit and instead of carving out the whole continent I just did a light outline and I think this turned out much much better. And now I can just install the globe with some more dowel.